Council has just resolved to proceed with the live streaming of Council meetings, which is a significant moment in the City's history. We will now continue with the proceedings this evening. We move on to item 13.1, which is replacement rights of way naming in Lawley Ward on page 8. Councillor Ferrante, you have an alternative recommendation. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, look, I would like to hold this over and pending, obviously, the discussion earlier about a question regarding RSL and the um, engagement of the state local member. And I'd like to try and push this to around the end of July, the next council meeting uh, in that time period, if that's okay, thanks. Sure, so that's a procedural motion. We have got a seconder from Councillor Migdale. Yes. Um, because that is a procedural motion, we will put that to the vote. So councillors, if you could hold your cards up, please. And that is unanimous, thank you. So that item is held over to a future meeting. I'll now move on to item 13.3, which is Churchlands Green proposed traffic management trial on page 51 of the agenda. Councillor Proud. You can remain seated. I, I thought you were going to go to the chair. No, I was going to you. Would you like me to go to the chair? It's up to you. No, no. <laughs> Um, uh, Councillor, would you like to move a motion or do you want me yeah, to go to the chair? I'm ready to rock and roll. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to move this. I'm sorry I didn't get it through early enough. I'd like to do a very minor amendment for the third recommendation, uh, that the City commences the trial in the first quarter of the 2020-21 financial year. That's when we get some money on the books. Uh, the reason for change, regardless of the current COVID-19 restrictions, the heavy non-residential traffic flow continues unabated through the Churchlands Green Estate, particularly commercial vans, buses, trucks and heavy haulage vehicles, as witnessed and reported by local Churchlands Green residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ree seconded that motion. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Councillor Caddy, Councillor Proud, your motion. Um, I'm not sure what the objection might be, but if it's in relation to uh, the the change that I've got it for the first quarter of 2020-21... You'll have uh, to just talk to the motion and wait to find out, Councillor. Well, there's a lot of stuff I could cover here. Um, yes, that's the, that's the objection. Thank you, Councillor Caddy. <laughs> uh, the reason is... The officer in the former recommendation that the city commences a three months trial only after the federal and state government restrictions resulting in COVID blah blah have been relaxed. Uh, I think, um, you know, looking around us and you listen to the news, where WA uh, and Perth is in a pretty good space for the relaxation of such. Keep oh, continue. Oh. So I'm sure it's going to be instigated as per, um, you know, the July, uh, the first quarter anyway. So what I wanted to make sure of, because of my reason for change, which is that the commercial vehicles, tradies, etc., has not stopped the whole time there's been restrictions. The only thing that might have ceased a bit are the... Um, the parents dropping their children off to school, i.e. Churchlands Primary on the south end or Newman on the north end, that's the only thing that's deceased, that's dropped off. So the commercial vehicles kick in at about five o'clock in the morning and there's been a number of residents that have reported this through to me and I've reported it through to engineering. They're all very aware of what's going on. There's been a good number all over the Churchlands Green site that have reported this. So I don't think they're making this up. The commercial vehicles, the heavy haulage vehicle, right up to heavy haulage um, and tradies vans, etc., cetera, um, they have not stopped. And some of those big heavy haulage vehicles, they might be not a restricted access vehicle. However, they've got trailers on, they are running over curbs and they're starting at like five o'clock in the morning. And then they head back around two o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. It has not stopped and they are very concerned. And that's why if the trial, trial were to go longer, as you'll see in the um, recommendation, of, well, the financial implications, officers quite prepared to push it out from three months to six months, albeit that will come with a monthly cost for monitoring of bollards, etc., and uh, the equipment for the trial. However, 
I think it's pretty safe to say that it's <clears throat> we need to kick this in. The people, the residents of Churchlands Green have put up with this growing number for the last three years. And so it's really come to a head in the last 12 months or so. And I can tell you that since the um, development um, of the Churchlands Green Estate has completed, and if you look at page 53, I'll give you all time to get to that. So it goes from 2010, from the first stage, right up to stage six. Um, and, that, and the figures go up to 2020. The last house, I think there might be half a house left to finish right now. The bulk of 98% of them finished about halfway through 2018 at the very outside. So if you look at the numbers that have grown since mid 2018 19, you can see those numbers are just running up 200, 200, then now they're over 3,000, which is more than a local access road is, is built to carry. So you can see the both roads, the both uh, alumni and university, they have grown and that is just continuing to grow. Hence, the sooner the better. We need to do something. We need to do something now. The soonest we can get it is as of July, um, in the first quarter, when we get the money on the budget. We do not have the money on the budget now, and that's outlined in the report. Everybody's seen that. So the first cab off the rank, um, the first quarter is three months, and I'm sure we'll be back to normal traffic flows um, even before that. However, we can't get started until July at the very earliest, so hence the reason I changed, um, did that minor amendment for condition number three. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Ree. Uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the former Mayor of um, Cambridge for attending tonight. And yes, uh, I do remember 15 years ago when we did start the um, this subdivision off to make it um, one of our showcases in the City of Stirling by being one of the first sustainability subdivisions. It wasn't the intention at that time for it to be a rat run between major roads. And it has increased over the years. Um, that is why many years ago I put up a motion to make sure there was no commercial traffic and trucks, etc., before seven o'clock, which um, was changed recently. So the complaints have increased. Uh, it's not getting any better. I think that um, the community consultation on page 89 is very significant that it affected a lot of people in this area and that they were prepared to make a comment. And the community should be applauded for doing so because it really shows that it does affect them. If we look at the responses, um, we've got uh, 70, 77, or oh, 80, 87% of people wanted either option two or something. They knew they needed something. Uh, and I think this is a very good start. It is a trial. So if it doesn't work or people come up with some other scenario, then the city of Stirling's prepared to listen to them. And I think that's what's important. We've, we're finally going to do something. We're giving it a go and people can make an evaluation judgment. Uh, just one question, please. I did have put in a table that should be accompanying this, and could I ask why the table is not part of this report to show that how many people are within 100 metres and how many outside 100, please? This is to do with the consultation. Mr. Mr. Littleton? Um, look, uh, no, I'm not exactly sure on uh, on the detail uh, that uh, Councillor is looking for. I'm happy to follow up with her, uh, but I haven't um, I haven't seen any comms that uh, that seek any additional information on the report. I think the uh, the outcome of the consultation has been fairly clear uh, in the um, in the body of the report. Councillor Ree. Uh, thank you. It is a table, and it does get put in and unfortunately sometimes it gets left out for whatever reason. But the significance of that table is to show that while it does say in here that 80, 61 households provided multiple responses, the reason I raised it previously is that we had a development where 97% of the people that actually put in were in support of the development. But when we drilled down, only 3% lived 100 metres away and only 10% lived 200 metres away. So it was not 
a representative of the local community. That's why 100 metres and 200 metres is important. I have no doubt that it's overwhelming in this report that it would show that 100 metres and 200 metres is where people live and it does affect them. My concern is that it's important that those data actually is in the report so people can, the public can see for themselves. So I think this is very important going forward and I think people do have a choice if it doesn't work. So I hopefully councillors will support it tonight. Thank you, councillor. Councillor Caddy. Yeah, thank you. Look, I am, um, I'm very supportive of, of this tonight. The only concern I have, and I would like to foreshadow the original recommendation, is that um, we start the trial too soon and then it tends, ends up not being representative. So we have had um, a lot of, I suppose, the community divided in previous times whenever we've tried to do anything in this area. And I think the purpose of running a trial is to be able to demonstrate to those community members who are concerned about the impact of these traffic modifications on other streets, to be able to demonstrate, hopefully, that those fears are unfounded and that um, there isn't a a significant impact on other streets. The problem, I think, is if, it, if you run that trial at a time when the traffic flow is not representative of normal, then the community have an easy out in terms of arguing that the trial that we've done is not representative, and then they, they don't feel reassured that um, the trial conditions have been successful. And I, that's, that's my one concern here. I don't want us to see, I don't want to see us trial this and then have the trial results called into question. So I actually think the officers saying we won't start this until the pandemic um, restrictions have been lifted is actually sensible. It may end up at the same result. It may end up being July that everything is back to normal. But just in case it's not, I actually think the original officer's recommendation um, puts that, um, that caveat in place. And that's why I'm, I'm more comfortable with that. I don't want to have to see us having to repeat this trial somewhere down the track because it turns out to be not representative. That's my only So concern. would you like to foreshadow the... I am foreshadowing yes. the, the original... Yep. Um, officer's recommendation. Thanks. Um, I might just get some officer comment on that too. If you can just give us um, some explanations of the timing, please. Mr Littleton. Yeah, thank you, uh, um, Mr Mayor. Look, essentially, um, I think uh, the, um, the councillor's debate has, uh, has largely summarised it quite well. Um, we, we really want to ensure that the trial period um, is, um, is relevant and, uh, and you know, we get a good sense of the impacts on traffic, not only within Churchlands Green, but also how the traffic's been redistributed around Churchlands Green. So our intent is to, uh, uh, is obviously to, um, uh, to do traffic modelling and, uh, and traffic review um, outside of, uh, of the catchment area just to understand the level of redistribution. Um, I don't mind it starting or, or a, a recommendation that sees it starting in the first quarter but, uh, of next year, but uh, I would need some flexibility to be able to extend the context or the, the length of the trial if that recommendation was passed uh, to give us some flexibility to ensure that there is some, uh, uh, that the trial would be extended to ensure that there is relevance in the data. Um, so if it's a three month trial, then we should wait until after COVID uh, and the, uh, the traffic returns to normal. Uh, if you're looking to start in the first quarter of next year, I'd be looking for some flexibility to extend the trial to ensure that there is relevance in the traffic data that we're gonna collect. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to talk? Councillor Farrelly? Just, just wait, Councillor Farrelly. We've just got to get you off mute. You've either got to unmute yourself or we have to. That's Thank it. You. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk. Look, in regard to Churchlands Green, and I'm quite familiar with that because I did look at a property down there recently, uh, last year, and that particular road is an absolute nightmare. Or that's one road basically just joined. The, I take into consideration what uh, the Director of Infrastructure has just stated, that he needs flexibility if it does start in the first quarter of the financial year. And I'd like to foreshadow that we should put that within the um, Councillor Proud's amendment, because I do believe we should start it sooner than later. The fact that... So, so Councillor, if we go to that, so rather than foreshadow, if you have got an amendment to Councillor Proud, you can put something now, if you'd like. Oh, well, I'd like to put in that um, 
the city commences a three month trial first quarter FY 2021. And if required, a flexibility uh, be given after the federal and state government restrict. No, I wouldn't put after the st state government restrictions. So uh, can someone uh, really Are you happy to that? have something put in there regarding some flexibility? But, Mr. Mayor, it's already covered if you read the report. It's covered in the financials. Is it, is it, it's got to be covered in the recommendation. Six, it, it says, says three, three to six trial. months. No, it doesn't. It says three months trial. And you'll see that I've said trial in my let's amendment. Not, let, let's just, Look, I'm so, happy to run with that. However, I believe it's covered. So perhaps we can just get some advice from the director. What wording would you need in there to give you the flexibility that Councillor Farrelly is talking about? Um, so again, we'd need to... Uh, we would need to um, to establish a, a greater time frame in one, so the council approves a trial of restrictions. Okay. Uh, can, of I, Vic, can I suggest that one be reworded to be a three to six month trial basis? Would that be sufficient? Let's just wait for the director. To, on he's on that. A, a three to six month. Yep. Miss Littleton. Yeah, look, that would be fine. However, what we don't know is when uh, the COVID situation will return to normal. So, um, if you're linking it to you know, we're looking to link it to um, the traffic uh, circumstances returning to um, to the levels that were causing of uh, causing concern. So, um, you know, it's that's why the recommendation was posed as it was, um, so that we could understand that the traffic had returned to normal, and then we would introduce the trial, which would then clearly uh, represent the um, uh, the future state of the uh, traffic conditions that we're looking to put in place. Um, you know, so yes, we could put three to six months. Uh, again, if I've got some capacity to extend the trial beyond that period, uh, particularly, um, you know, you know, to to uh, to ensure the uh, the credibility of the data. Uh, I just need a little bit more time just to work through the exact wording that I'm looking for. Uh, if we're looking to, ex uh, to to amend the officer's recommendation. All right, Councillor Farrelly, it's, it's still your motion. Um, you're still your turn. So, would you like to make any comment regarding an amendment? Um, look, I'm happy to have three to six months. I'll tell you why, because we are at the moment in a situation where everyone's gone back to school. Um, we've still got all the building trades working and things of that nature. Now, there's a lot of traffic that comes from the schools and also the building trades. And then you've got the trucks that go through regularly. We could have another lockdown if, you know, if we get what they're talking about, their second wave. Does Councillor that... Farley, can I just stop you there? I just want to, while I've got you, just you, you wanted to move an amendment. And so far, we've got, we've just added three to six months. So if you're yeah, happy, with, happy that, with that, I'll speak to happy. see if the mover and second are happy with that. I'm happy with that. Right, you're happy? Yes. So the mover and second are happy to add that so it becomes part of the substantives. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And we, sorry, we're just getting some direction here. We need to... Yeah, look, you would remove the, the city commences, uh, the trial. Uh, you'd probably remove three altogether, wouldn't you? It doesn't say three in this. Yep. All right, Councillor Farrelly, continue. Um, the reason I am raising that is there could be something happening within the next six months anyway, where we could have another COVID lockdown and um, you might have to have a pause in the trial because it won't be indicative necessarily of the traffic. And I think we need to leave that to the director and his staff of infrastructure because they're the ones who will know exactly what um, is a and a typical period of traffic. But I do think now the schools have opened, you will see a lot of that happening. And as uh, was said by Councillor Proud, the um, working traffic hasn't stopped and it's coming through from five o'clock in the morning. Thank you, I'm happy. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Sergeant, you indicated. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, basically, I just want to echo Councillor Farrelly. Um, I'm actually supportive of um, doing something here in Churchlands Green, um, but I'm actually going to support Councillor Caddy's alternative, um, mainly because we're in unknown times. And as Councillor uh, Farrelly put it, um, we don't know if we're going to get another case. All it takes is one person to walk through a shopping centre and next thing you know, voila, we're back down to lockdown again. And I think this is one one motion that we should leave up to the city, up to the director, to actually uh, decide 
when we start this, when things are normalised, um, and then we can get some proper results rather than something that's half done um, because of whatever the situation is on the time. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this item? If not, I will go back to Councillor Proud to close debate. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, look, whether the normality returns next week or next year, I'd like... I'd, it needs to start as soon as possible, which is in the first quarter, because the traffic, as the reason for my changes, the traffic is running unabated continuously. The heavy vehicles and now schools are back. That's why I want it to start. Now, whether it... Um, However long the trial may go, and it is covered off in, in the financial um, implications, the monitoring, etc., is not going to occur until the traffic is back to normal. Now, engineering have got cables out in five areas where there's regular and recent traffic counts. They'll be able to tell even before the Premier tells us all everything's back to normal. They will be looking at the traffic counts of regular um, and recent traffic counts that they can tell. So right now, a, a 900 um, vehicle per day is down to 300, and they will be watching it. Those cables will be in for quite some time while they monitor that. They can pull the figures off that all the time. The officers will certainly know, probably before the Premier, uh, whether things are back to normal, and we'll be able to tell as well. But they will actually have the stats to justify when is normal. They will not be doing the trial, uh, sorry, the monitoring, when the traffic is not back up to its normal rate. And there's any amount of information in this report that tells you what it is, and it's it's growing, increasing in in numbers. Like every time they do it, they've they've been testing. Um, doing the counts on Churchlands Green every year at the same time of the year through from stage one, way back when. So certainly the officers aren't going to be taking any money, any checks and reporting back to council, as, the, as is stated in the recommendation, before the numbers are back to normal. Otherwise, the numbers would be skewed. That's obvious. So however that can work to get this... Um, happening. The thing is, my main uh, push is to have this starting as soon as possible when the funds are available, because we've still got unabated traffic rumbling through there from 5am in the morning. So that's my whole point. Um, I understand Councillor Ree uh, regarding the table, and if you look at page... 60 is a really good way of describing exactly where the um, consultation, where the responses have come from. Uh, Churchlands Green resident is represented in blue on the map. Um, the numbers are there. The purple represents not specified. Uh, the green are uh, 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 suburbs outside of Churchlands Green. Um, that's possibly or probably Floriot, which is across the road in Cromarty Road. Um, how many is there? Uh, there are other suburbs and others aren't specified. So the bulk of the respondents are clearly from Churchlands Green in the in the numbers of... Councillor Proud, can I ask you to sum up the debate? OK. Please. Very much in favour of this and I just can't remember where we ended up with what was accepted. So could we have a quick look at that? Yep, so your recommendation with a slight change from um, three to six. So commen commencing immediately, and yep. if you want to say how long it goes for, um, I think that's been covered off in... Um, well, what yep. if it takes nine months? So... Uh, that's the problem. Well... The motion doesn't allow that. OK, Six well... Six months, thank you very much. It's done. You're now summing up. Can't change the Council, Yes, just, OK. Really. All right. So. Well, we're happy to go with that. Let's suck it and see. It'll just have to come back so. to Council if if it needs to be... The officers will so, bring it back to So, us. Councillors, we have an amended recommendation up currently. It's been put up by Councillor Proud and Councillor Ree. 
um, noting that Councillor Caddy has foreshadowed the officer's recommendation. So I will put this original recommendation to the vote now. If you could please vote. So four, we have Councillor Spagnolo, Councillor Thornton, Councillor Proud, Councillor Ree, Councillor Hatton, Councillor Perkoff, Councillor Lagan, Councillor Sandri, Councillor Boothman, Councillor farrelly Ferranti. Against, we have Councillor Caddy, Councillor Sargent and myself. That motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Sorry, Mr Mayor, you didn't get my vote. Oh, sorry. It's <laughs> and four, we also have Councillor Migdale. Thanks. Sorry, your screen's really, you've got a little screen. Yes. I've got it. All right, great. So we got that on the record. That's, yep. Thank you. The motion is carried. We now go to item 13.4, the Strand Reserve Landscape Concept on page 72. Councillor Sandri. Oh, um, Mr Mayor, we have an alternative, if it's possible. It's primarily to just Anything defer. is possible, Councillor. Thanks. It's your motion. Uh, <laughs> Um, that Council defer consideration of this item until ordinary meeting of Council in June 2020 to review more cost-effective equipment and review of community consultation. The reason being um, is, just briefly, that um, it appears the officers have considered people not responding to community consultation as them not going to utilise the equipment, and I don't necessarily think that is the correct way of interpreting people not responding. So, um, Councillor Lagan and I would like some time to speak with the officers offline regarding this. Sure. Thanks. Councillor Lagan, you're seconding that. So, that is a procedure to hold this item over until a future council meeting in June. So, I will put that to the vote. You can hold your cards up, please, councillors. Councillor Perkoff, Councillor Hatton. That's all right. That is unanimous. Thank you, councillors. We'll now go on to item 13.5, Security Service Budget Estimates on page 78. Councillor Ferrante, you have an alternative recommendation. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, if they could please put that up on the screen. I'll just quickly go through it. Um, it's OK. Sure, and if you'd like to just read that out. Yeah, sure. OK, so um, that council notes the budget estimates and options to improve responsiveness of the city's security services, number one. Number two, that the city progress with additional security resources as outlined in the option three, with the additional cost to be funded from the, um, from the operating surplus and the city's secure reserve for at least the next two years. Thereafter, council will consider an increase to the security service charge as part of its budget uh, deliberations. And option number three, that the city continues to progress with the engagement initiatives as identified in the report to help improve the community's knowledge and the community's safety and crime statistics. And the reason for change and um, that uh, obviously uh, the COVID-19 virus has come into the implications, this was done prior as a motion, but further to the change, the operating surplus for 2018-19 financial year was 107,515. Forecast surplus for 2019-20 fiscal year after 10 months of actuals is 72,000. So most of the additional cost of option three can be absorbed with the rest funded by moderate drawdown on security reserve. Option three, which provides additional temporary resources, provides maximum flexibility to provide additional manpower and woman power when needed most. Thank you, Councillor. And Councillor Caddy has seconded that motion. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Just a question? Yeah, I'll allow a question, Councillor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, what is the um, security reserve? What's the amount in it? Yeah, Miss Miss Hawkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as at the thirty first of March, five hundred and seventy five thousand nine hundred and ninety two. Happy with Mr. that, Mayor. So plenty to cover it. No yes. drums. Great. If there's no one, no one opposed. Then I will put that item. If you could hold up your cards, please. That is unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Item 13.6, Schedule of Accounts for Period of Night, ending 31st March 2020 on page 85. Is there a mover of a motion? Councillor Caddy. Moving the officer's recommendation as printed on page 85. Thank you, Councillor Sargent. You're seconding that. Is there anyone opposed? A question, Councillor Ree. Is it just a question? Okay, I will go. Councillor Caddy, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you. Councillor Sargent. 
No, thank you, Ms. Mayor. Councillor Ree. Just have one main question in this particular one. Uh, is that in um, for the scheduled checks and payments in February, we were around 17 million and now we're at 37. With a reduction in what we do, and we're still holding staff, why is there a $20 million difference? Thank which you. Which is quite significant when we're all supposed to be holding our purse strings in. Ms Hawkins. Thank you, through you, Mr Mayor. The main change between the months, Councillor Ree, will be related to investment, because any um, movement in funds and investments is dealt with in this report. And we do main movement around our reserves and trust funds quarterly, so that's captured in this particular report. You happy with that? I still think that $20 million is a significant difference for people playing it from March to, um, from February to March. And while that might be different in investments, I still think that that is significant and it does concern me. Um, with regard to a couple of other questions, which I went through today, um, just, sorry, my apologies. Um, is um, that to find it now? I'm good. Um, it was the. Are there questions you've sent through to Miss Hawkins? Yeah. Is that, and it just you have a copy for whatever of reason they're not coming up on my thing. But anyway. Ms Hawkins might have them there if you... All right. So um, one of the other um, uh, questions is with regard to... Um, at the, the, I've talked about the rate stimulus and the fact of um, not having... Uh, that would be... Are we still talking about item 13.6 yeah, or have we moved on to 13.7? No, it does affect it as well. Okay, we'll get, if we can get to your question, this is relating to the schedule of accounts. Yes. Yep. Um, that we're actually not paying the union fees, so I'd like that explanation made quite clear, if that could be possible right now, and I have mentioned yep. that to... Yep, Ms Hawkins, are you, are you able to answer? Provide comment. Yes, thank you, to you, Mr. Mayor. The, the payment, in terms of regulations, we're required to report on everything that we make as a payment. As a city, we make payment to union on behalf of our employees. So our employees' union fees are deducted from their payroll, and then we on pay that, if you like, to the unions. Um, but we need to include that in this report because everything that we pay needs to be shown monthly to council. Are you happy with that explanation, council? Yes, I'm very happy, but I just think it needed to be recorded for the people that actually asked. Yep. Another concern I've got is that we paid out something like 14, I think it was 14, uh, $1.4 million for consultants for the last month uh, and, and um, additional staff, if you add it up. So my concern is if we're paying $74 million a year in staffing costs and we are trying to keep all our staff, why would we be sitting there paying another extra $1.4 million for consultants? Ms Hawkins. Thank you, through you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Councillor. Yes, that was um, agency staff that we talked to earlier rather than consultancy. Um, so we do, where we have vacancies or, or positions within the cities, at some point we do use agency staff, um, depending on the skills required and the position. The budget sits within employee costs, um, so it is offset by an underspend on employee costs. Councillor Ray. Yeah, I, I just think some of those things, though, need to be... Perhaps we should actually have a couple of paragraphs so people understand a bit more that, you know, we're not trying to go over budget, we're not doing above our means, we're trying to stay within our means. But sometimes the explanation, it, it, sometimes we need an explanation. Um, my other comment with regard to local services and local people, I'll, I'll reserve that after my discussion today. And uh, I just... Don't know why I can't bring it up, but I can't bring up the other questions. But I'd like to thank um, Ms Hawkins for um, all my questions. <laughs> and answers. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Ree. Is there any other indicate Councillor Sandry? Just a quick question. Um, on page nine of the attachment, um, 
check 512873 or EFT number, Child Support Agency. Can I just have an explanation what that? Ms Hawkins. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Again, that's a payroll, a payroll deduction. So that's deductions from employees who make payments. Yep. All right. Is there any other indication? If not, I'll go to Councillor Caddy to close. No, it's happy. I will put that item then to the vote. Item 13.6, if I can see your cards, please. Great. Thank you, councillors. That is unanimous. Councillor Migdale, your green is clashing with your blue screen behind you, your fancy screen, so it goes clear on Zoom. I'll now go to item 13.6. Um, I've done that. 13.7, monthly statement of financial activity for the month ending 31st of March 2020 on page 94. Do I have a mover of a motion? Councillors, Councillor Caddy. Uh, Officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Sandra, are you seconding? Was that? Yeah, just yes. Sure. Uh, is, yep, we've got a couple of questions. Councillor Caddy, I'll go to you as mover of the motion. No, nothing, thank you. Councillor Sandri. Um, thank you, through the Mayor. Um, just a quick question. Just in light of COVID-19 and the risks associated with bank, the banking industry, et cetera, have we looked at um, the risk associated with our portfolio in terms of banks that we bank with at the moment? Ms Hawkins. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, thanks, Councillor Sandy. That is something that we're doing and um, conscious that we wanted to bring something to the May workshop with councillors to talk to the banking and, and what we're looking at there. Happy with that, Councillor? Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ree, you had a question? Uh, yes, please. On page 96, my apologies, I didn't, didn't have time, nor did Miss Hawkins have time for me. Um, not her fault. She was busy. Um, that um, on page 96, we've got the operating revenue in February was 74 and the operating revenue was 77. So it's costing us 3,000 more, um, three, 3,000 more to operate than we did when we didn't have the COVID on, which is per month. And then when we've got the operating expenditure, we've reduced our operating expenditure by 20,000. So if we reduced our operating expenditure, expenditure by 20,000, which is great, which no doubt is the pools and everything not having on, I, and our revenue's only gone down by 3,000, I find that odd when a lot of places have actually paid a lot or has a lot of the clubs, I know one club, which I haven't come back to you about, has already paid their um, flood lighting bill of 4000 which I was going to take up also with um, Mr Quirk. So some of the clubs have paid up. So my question is, is this operating revenue because a lot of the establishments have paid up, but because of our stimulus package, we will then give them the money back. So actually next month, it will be a lot less to counteract that. Ms Hawkins. Uh, thank you to you, Chair. With regards to the revenue, when invoices are raised, it shows as revenue in our, in our accounts. So you will see that as soon as an invoice has been raised, we then recognise that as a revenue. For those clubs where we have a rent abatement or rent deferral, we've raised the invoices, but we've effectively shown that as a cost to the city. So that is not showing as a revenue for um, a club. Does that answer your question, Councillor? No, not really, because Ms. then then the expenditure would be still high, because therefore you're you're saying that that's a cost. So if they're paying four thousand and then you're not going to charge them, but they haven't got the money back, and then you're saying, well, it's a, an expenditure, then you should actually have more. The cost should have gone right up because we're actually we're counteracting all this. So no, doesn't that? Th yeah, that's the way I would look at it. I think one of the things, remembering this is the financials for the month ending 31st of March as well. So a lot of the impacts wouldn't be realised. Yeah. yeah. Probably a lot of them, yeah. And the other thing is that where we've got our, um, down the bottom, we've got our funded from the transfer to accumulated funds. We have 315,000 for March and 234,000 for February. I wouldn't have thought, and going back with just your last comment, Mr Mayor, that we haven't had time to take a lot of money out of funds yet. But this is a, equating to um, 70, 80, 90,000. So why I wouldn't have thought we'd have time to take a lot of that money out. So that would be a concern. Ms Hawkins. 
Thank you to you, Mr Mayor. That mainly relates to transfers to and from reserves. And um, coming, I guess, back to the Mayor's earlier point, it, this really relates to impacts before COVID and is actually a result of the changes that we made at budget review, so Council's adoption of budget review and the reserve transfers that we made at that point. Councillor Ray? So that would mean we've now changed that again. So that would be reflected next month. Ms Hawkins? Thank you, Mr Mayor. With regards to the packages that Council have adopted so far in terms of the stimulus, we have about 2.1 million in total, but a million of that related to the Verge bonds, which is a non-cash. So far, we've seen expenditure of around 240,000, and you will, still, you will start to see that coming through in the next uh, April and May reports. I'd just like to thank $300 million is, is difficult for um, sometimes the ratepayers to realise where it all goes, even $1,000 to a, um, a fountain in a bowling club. So um, thank you, Ms Hawkins. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Councillor. I do now have Councillor Ferrandi, and then I'll go to you, Councillor Lagan. So I just need... Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, mine now, thanks to live streaming, I won't mention the two banks that I have concerns with, and I guess I'll take it up with um, uh, Ingrid, uh, Ms Hawkins, uh, in relation to those two banks uh, that I think we should be divesting from. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lagan. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. And um, through you two officers, I guess it would... Um it would mirror some of Councillor Ferranti's concern just then. And um, my question is around the fact that um, um, our debt-free city is indeed fortunate to be able to hold such considerable funds. But my question to officers would be, um, um, can the officers confirm that all funds under management at banks in mm -hmm. Australia are underwritten by a federal government guarantee scheme or does that guarantee scheme from the federal government only cover a percentage of funds under management? Ms Hawkins? Thank you to you, Mr Mayor. With regards to the banks that we invest with Councillor Lagan in line with the investment policy, those would be covered. Councillor Lagan. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other indication? If not, I will go to Councillor Caddy to close the debate, which is happy. So I will put that motion. Uh, if you could hold your cards up, please. That motion is unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. I'll go to item 13.8, tender for the supply of irrigation equipment on page 112, noting that there's a confidential attachment with this one. So a mover of the motion, Councillor Migdale. And a seconder for the motion, Councillor Proud. Is there anyone opposed? If not, I will put this item. All those in favour, just hold your cards up, please. That motion is unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. I'll now go to item 13.9, which is Terry Tysack Aquatic Centre internal retiling, noting that an absolute majority vote is required. It's on page 128. Councillor Lagan, you have an alternative? Yeah, I'd like to move the um, alternative recommendation that's listed in the running sheet for tonight. Thank you. I think you should just read it out. I think just so everyone's aware of what the change in case they haven't seen it. Okay, so um, the alternative recommendation reads, number one, that Council endorse the allocation of 336606 to be spent on Terry Tysack Aquatic Centre retiling project, and two, that the funds for the Terry Tysack Aquatic Centre retiling project be allocated from savings made from within the capital budget. Um, the reason for the change is the tiling of the Terry Tysack Aquatic Centre indoor pool was scheduled for completion in the 2021 financial year. The works can commence this financial year and in doing so will take advantage of the current closure of the aquatic centres during the COVID-19 restrictions. Thank you. Councillor Sandra, you're seconding that motion. Is anyone opposed? Just one question, is it Councillor Reid? Yep, your question. My question is on recommendation two, it, although it says the Terry Tysack Aquatic Centre, Two says relisted the year budget for the refurbishment of the Korean Baseball Club facility. Do we? That's not a motion that's on the table. No, that's that's. Oh, this is my question. Yep. My question is whether or not that this alternative motion does affect them from no, the start. No, it doesn't. That's all. Yep. So either way, this was just about an underspend in the capital works budget, but it was to take out that feeling that it may affect them, which it won't. If everyone's Councillor Sergeant, you got a question? Yeah, just a quick one. So uh, just uh, off the back of uh, Councillor Reid, the Korean Baseball 
club facility. When is that expected to get started? Uh, it... Early in the new financial year. Okay, according to the report, you're still umming and ahhing, talking to the club, you know, just trying to get designs and whatnot going. Um, so early in the financial year? Yes, my understanding is, Mr Littleton. Yeah, look, we're currently working through with the club just finalising scope. Uh, as soon as that's completed, which I understand it is now, uh, we'll complete the de design development and uh, deliver next financial year. So it's, uh, it's on the runway and um, we're working hard with the, with the club uh, to resolve um, the scope issues going forward. Happy with that? All right, is anyone opposed? No? Okay, we'll put that in motion then. If we can have a show of cards. That is unanimous. Thank you, councillors. All right, we'll now move on to item 14, which is motions of which previous notice has been given. Uh, the first one of these is item 14.1. It's a notice of motion from Councillor Stephanie Proud for Bradley Reserve Double View, Temporary Playground, Shade Sale and Picnic Table. So late report agenda on page six, Councillor Proud. Uh, that Council considers listing the cost to install temporary shade over the playground and a picnic table at Bradley Reserve in Double View as part of the 2020-21 financial year budget. And I'd just like to make a note, I actually submitted this on February 23, um, and then it was put that we'd do a, a, a public open space and needs assessment, so I hung off until that was completed before I, it ended up getting submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sargent, you're seconding that motion. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? If not, I will put that. All those in favour, please. Noting that Councillor Franti has left the lounge room. <laughs> and that motion, that is unanimous. Thank you, councillors. I'll now go on to item 14.2. Um, it's a notice of motion from myself um, regarding the civic service for former councillor Jim Clarko package. Late report agenda item P12. Rather than vacate the chair, I'm happy if someone is willing to move the motion of Councillor Perkoff. Happy to move the motion. Can you just read it out? Okay. Page 12 or 13, yeah. Can someone just get it up for council? Apologies for Mr Mayor. Okay. This is your big moment, councillor. <laughs> Submitted following notice of motion that uh, the city writes to the family of Jim Clarko offering a civic service to be held at Clarko Reserve in Trigg with a reception to follow to be held at Trigg Island Surf Life Saving Club following the lifting of the COVID-19 restrictions and in consultation with the family. And two, that council considers the cost to fund the service and reception for Jim Clarko as part of the 2021 financial year budget for civic Functions. Thank you. Councillor Caddy, you're seconding that motion. Is there anyone opposed? Okay. Councillor Ree, your question? A question that might turn into a, um, a, an amendment. Um, it, when I'm looking at the staff and having all our staff here and what they do, I am concerned that we're actually saying it to be held at the Trig Surf Life Saving Club and not at the city like we did previously, because um, that's what we've got our staff for and employing them. So I... So Would I can, like I can to answer know that quickly. Why it can't yeah. just be the city? Look, and possibly it can be, but the intent of this um, was to discuss it. It wasn't to take it away from the family. And obviously, having Clarko Reserve and um, the relationship that um, Jim Clarko had with that area, it just seemed obvious that it was next door. It wouldn't mean that our, facility, our um, function staff couldn't actually still cater for it, any of that. So um, there's no intent that this has to be in writing. Um, the family may actually say they don't want it at the Trigger Island Surf Life Saving Club. Well, I think that might come back to the previous, one of our previous motions, where what the intent is. So I don't know whether or not, I, I don't know whether that actually should be deleted and just say reception to be followed um, after consultation with the family. And that, that leaves it open because I think there's too many variables going down there and I do think we need to look after our staff. So that would be my suggestion for the mover and the seconder. So you'd like to put an amendment just to remove the... Re um, listing of Tree Island Surf Life Saving Club. So just with a reception to follow. Yeah, following the lifting, yeah. It doesn't change the intent. It was just a, a suggestion. So Councillor Perkov, are you happy to remove the listing of the location? Yes, I, Mr Mayor. Councillor Caddy? Yep. Happy with that, Councillor Ree? Uh, 
I think that, that's actually good. My other point is that I don't want to, not that I, um, I think Jim Clarko was, a, and I can remember him very well from, from not only as an officer writing for him when he was a minister in parliament, but also as a councillor. But I do think uh, whether or not what we're doing here is, I believe Mr Quirk was writing a memorial come policy, plaque policy, the whole idea of these things was to catch all these issues. My concern that was raised is that we've had other councillors die, um, uh, pass away, um, um, Councillor Clarko was a councillor for six years, um, Councillor Ham was a councillor for 12, and yet we haven't actually, we never put up to do anything for him because I, when I raised it after what happened to Councillor Guilford and Councillor Strickland, um, I was sort of informed it would be encompassed in a policy. So therefore these things wouldn't be coming to council all the time and people wouldn't be looking at politics. And that's my concern. So I'm concerned about Councillor Ham and I'm concerned about our way forward. And that I believe was the intention of a policy. Yep. So I'll answer it, and then if there is any more, I will go to the mover and seconder because it's getting towards debate now. The intent of this, whilst I understand those, um, this was a very significant um, member of the community and it was a very significant time being at the early COVID restrictions. And so this was about um, the family. There was only... The, the actual family weren't allowed to go in. So many of the family weren't even allowed to stand outside and watch the ceremony. So it just became very apparent how... And obviously, there's many members of the community who have been affected by this. But I thought someone um, who would normally have had many hundreds of the community probably go to see a service, it would be appropriate to do a low-cost service in the park or the reserve. That's where this one came from. So it is out of the normal due to the COVID restrictions. So it's more of a religious thing rather than a cultural thing? Oh, wouldn't. Uh, then, Mr Mayor, so, through so let's you, go. Councillor, Councillor Strickland, we did as well, and we didn't have COVID then. Yeah, th this isn't about any of those. So, but if we want to debate it's, it, I will go to the well, mover in a second. I, I look, I, I'm not opposing it. It's just the fact that when I've raised things before, with the whole idea was to tidy it up in a in a policy. That's yeah. all. Yeah, and and sure that could come. But again, I think the intent of this motion, and without obviously, it's not up for debate at the moment. But the intent of this motion was purely about um, rectifying something that happened during the COVID restrictions. That's it. In that case. No, in that case, I will go to count. No, everyone wants a quick comment, though, and I don't think it's fair when Councillor Perkoff and Councillor Caddy have moved and seconded. So, no. Okay. So, if no one's opposed, I will put that motion to the vote. Could hold your cards up. We got. Yep. Well, there, there they will come. That is unanimous. Thank you, councillors. We'll now move on to item 15, which is notice motion for consideration at the next meeting. I have Neil. Item 16, questions by members of which due notice has been given, I have nil. Uh, I did submit um, notice of motion for consideration at the next meeting. Okay, um, do we have those from governments? Yes, we'll just get them up. Sorry, Councillor, I didn't have them. That's all right. <laughs> I really hope Councillor Migdale is sitting... Yeah, okay, that was a worry. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Migdale, you just went sideways up a wall. <laughs> I know how she feels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Um, that a report a report be presented to the future council meeting on the so, potential. So this is a nom. So this, I was just doing yes. questions. This was your. I'll oh, say so you'll notice a motion. So for, for consideration the next yep. meeting. Thank you. Okay. I'd already gone past that. That's why. Sorry. Okay. Read it out. Um. That, um, that a report be presented at a future council meeting, oh no, uh, on the potential of the City of Stirling hosting the 50th WA Wheatland Conference in 2021 and consideration be given in the 2020-21 budget to host this event. Okay, That's thank you. That's my first one and yep. then it's another one. Okay. 
And then the next one is that a report be presented to a future council meeting on planning for celebrations in 2021, namely the City of Stirling's Golden Jubilee, the 60th anniversary of the formation of the Shire of Perth, and the 150th anniversary of the formation of the Old Perth Road Board, and costings are considered as part of the 2021 budget. And there's no time after consultation with um, Ms. Hawkins, there's no time frame on the council meeting because we don't know. Okay. And so therefore it's not, and we don't have our committee to send it to, so therefore it's just an open-ended. Yep, yeah. no, that's fine, the intent's yep. clear. Thank you, councillor. So we've gone to, I've done item 16 as well, questions by members which due notice have been given. I have nil. I'll now go on to item 17, which is new business of an urgent nature, late report agenda. This is item 17.1, the City of Stirling COVID-19 Economic Stimulus and Community Recovery Package, late report agenda, page 16. Councillor Sandri. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I wish to move the officer recommendation on page 17. Thank you. Councillor Lagan, you're seconding that motion. Thank you. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Is that just a question? If a member, if a, um, sorry, if a member of public, um, um, a small business, a community, sport, anybody out there that fits into the, one of these categories but we don't know about, have they got the ability to come and say, what about me? Yeah. To I, someone? Yeah, I think the, the clear direction of this is a direction. So what you're supporting here with the COVID stimulus package isn't all of the specifics. Obviously, we've still got to go through a formal budget process where all of that will be taken into consideration. Uh, this, is, this follows on from a fairly um, strong direction from the Minister about providing a framework around um, budget deliberations. All right, so I will put that. There's no one opposed. I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please. That is... That was to ask a question. Oh, sorry. I'll, look, I'll, let's just go back. Sorry, Councillor. I'll allow it. Yeah, OK. Sorry, because I just realised you thought my green was early green. Um, I just thought see. you were excited to vote for it, Councillor uh, Farrelly. Uh, well, I, yeah, I know. The opportunity <laughs> to talk. Um, look, it's in regard to the clarification. You know, you've got capital investment stimulus. Very clearly, major capital investment to stimulate the local economy. Then it comes down to program includes upgrades, sporting facility refurbishments and cycleways, focus on projects providing the greatest employment opportunities, 400 plus projects under 0.5 million giving opportunities to small business. You've got a very clear amount to in, um, in terms of what that's going to be. So my concern is that, and you know I'm talking about community, um, aware, uh, contact with the community and changes within the community environment. We've got some very big number um, projects there, but in terms of the smaller ones, we're not clarifying. So, Councillor, I'm going to have to stop you there. If it's not a question, I, I really have to go open debate and go back to the movement. Well, we well, have we got a clarification of the 400 plus projects? So, yep, so... Mr Littleton, can you provide an answer? Uh, yeah, look, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, um, Councillor, we deliver 400-plus um, projects generally most years, so uh, we have a fairly, um, a fairly focused um, team across the board, across all of the, uh, the various areas. So um, the, uh, the actual detail of the projects that we will be presenting will form part of the budget pack, so we'll be going through that uh, in greater detail on the 25th of May, uh, and they'll certainly be in the budget packs as well. So the detail itself, so tonight isn't uh, for the detail, uh, but the budget process will actually give everybody or every councillor an opportunity to have greater visibility over the detail of those uh, of those packages. Okay, my next question in regard to those... Well, in that case, I will stop you there. I'll come back to you, Councillor, but I will go to Councillor Sandri as a mover of the motion because we've got other people indicating now. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, obviously, this is a result, direct result of a workshop that councillors had with the officers and was facilitated um, by an external party. And I think what the officers have come up with is a really sound approach and has taken into consideration the comments made by councillors um, 
uh, particularly concerns around certain aspects of the stimulus which have been amended. So um, I applaud the officers for the amount of time that they've put into this package. I think it's um, fundamental that we understand that this needs still needs formal adoption through our 2021 budget process um, and things such as the projects, um, we will get them, I'm assuming, line item um, as we normally do as part of our budgeting process attached to um, what our corporate community strategic plan, whatever those two ones are aligned with. So I think um, it's sound and I think um, it's a really good direction for us to head in. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lagan. Uh, yeah, just quickly, um, I agree with what Councillor Sandy was saying, but this, um, this is proof in the pudding, if you like, of what the ministers asked the cities to do, or municipalities to do. Um, I note the comments that were made by the President of Walga and the fact that local government, um, via state government and, and federal government, have been asked to do the heavy list lifting here. The City of Stirling can do that heavy lifting. We, we have a, um, a budget that enables us to do this type of work. The City of Stirling will continue with the work that it does in every financial year and the projects that the, um, that the director has indicated that we've done. We're able to keep those projects going, we're able to keep things like the Women's Refuge open and keep those going. Yes, these are difficult times and they require us to make a spend, but um, I'm sure other elected members have had phone calls from members of the public or comments on Facebook asking what is it that City of Stirling is actually going to do? And I note that um, the, the Mayor sent a copy of a letter that he received from the local government minister thanking him and the city for the work they're doing. This reflects very well the fact that the city of Stirling is standing up and can actually do the things that we say we're going to do. I look forward to the budget process. There might be some massaging and changes in that, but I highly recommend this. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Farrelly, I will go back to you now if you'd like to continue with your questions or any debate. Let's just get you off mute. Sorry, Councillor. Just. Look, sorry about that. Um, look, I take into account what Councillor um, Lagan and Councillor Sandri say. I, I'm supposed, in a way, I look at major capital items, you will have a very firm understanding of what the capital investment will be. Um, however, I don't see the differentiation between that. I agree, though, that this is actually a wonderful um, support across the board to anyone in the um, city. I just want to actually not lose our focus that people are looking for um, changes that they can see on the ground. They're looking for changes within their community. So yes, we still will keep our um, venues uh, open such as the women's refuge, such as the pools and everything like that. But I'm just looking at what are the proposals? Have we got within this proposal additional capital expenditure that will illustrate to the community that there are things happening that will make the community a better place to walk and cycle around. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Spagnolo. Um, thanks very much, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I think it's interesting to note that the City of Stirling uh, is contributing some 15% to the total local government contribution of 300 million. Uh, we're looking at putting in somewhere around 43.7 million, and I think that's quite significant. It's also a shame that uh, we've had to have a coronavirus to bring in a zero rate freeze, or at least that's what we're aiming for. <laughs> but what I'd like to ask is, at our workshop, we talked about the possibility of some rates going up and some rates going down as a result of uh, us, if you like, having to alter the rating system. Uh, for example, I think it was suggested that some of the industrial and commercial properties would more than likely go up slightly, and some of the residential properties uh, will go down or remain the same as last year. Now, we know it's a valuation year this year. Uh, the GRVs uh, are likely to come down. I guess what I'd like to know is, how are we actually going to calculate these GRVs? Are we going to actually introduce some differential rating? Uh, and I know that we can do this. For instance, you know, I know that there's a variation. If you live in a four bedroom, two bathroom home, and the house next door is a two bedroom, one bathroom home, for instance, obviously the four bedroom one is going to pay more in rates. But if uh, there's a differential system that is put in place where you say, right, all properties that have a rental value, a gross rental value of, say, 450 to 500 pay X amount, uh, 500 to 600 pay X amount, would something like that 
alleviate a situation where you'd have uh, an indifference, if you like, in rates from one house to the other. I'm just wondering if uh, Ms Hawkins could comment on that, please. I was going to give it a go myself, Councillor. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Look, and I think that the simple answer is anything is up for discussion during budget deliberation. So, and I know councillors have expressed some of them have just um, expressed some interest in exploring differential rates. I think the really important thing for everyone to remember is the GRV isn't done by us. It's done by an external organisation organised through the state government, and we pay for that process to happen. But the GRV is a proportionate formula. It's the gross rental valuations of all those properties out there. And so whilst everything goes down this year, so with the GRVs, they have occurred, and it means that everything goes down significantly. But what it means is our rate base, if we want to still get the same revenue, we reproportion that formula across it. And that's why this particular COVID um, economic stimulus has that 3% reduction to ensure that those properties that may have been revalued and now that they're on the slightly higher percentage of that proportion, it means that no one will pay more than they did last year. But in simple answer, nothing is off the table in terms of differential rates. Uh, thank you for that uh, explanation, Mr Mayor. You're welcome. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr Mayor, just finally, I, I think um, it it's great that we as a uh, local government are assisting small business out there. I think that's good. Um, but there is a limit that we can go to. I think you'll find that small business would appreciate it more if we were able to help them with expediting planning approvals. And I know that that's been happening in recent times. I've been getting excellent feedback. Um, like things like uh, building permits, some of them of course are certified and there's a statutory requirement that they need to be approved within 10 days. But where they're not, uh, they're uncertified, it can take up to 25 days. You know, expediting stuff like that, expediting DAs, cutting red tape, all of these things would be very helpful to stimulating business. And I just urge the staff, I mean, you've done a great job in putting this package together, but I urge them to also take uh, some sort of recognition that people out there will motivate and get moving if we don't hold them up here unnecessarily. Yep. Thank you. Very valid points, Councillor. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to add some debate to this or discussion? If not, I will go to Councillor Sandra if you'd like to close debate. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just, um, uh, just two minor things. Firstly, the rates matter. We'll discuss that more in depth at budget workshops, but I take um, Councillor Spagnolo's points and um, we'll work on that. And the second point is, is that I think the stimulus package seeks to provide um, quick wins um, and have on-ground um, tangible things that the City of Stirling can do, um, which is what all of us councillors would like to see. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, that closes debate. So we'll put that item 17.1. And cast your vote, and that is unanimous. Thank you very much, councillors. We have already dealt with item 17.2, live streaming at the beginning of the meeting, which is why people at home can see us. Now, councillors, can I please have a mover and a seconder to go behind closed doors? Councillor Proud, Councillor Lagan is seconded. Uh, elected members, before we move on to the next item of business, we must now say goodbye to those viewing from home. I was waved, yeah. And to the public who are in attendance in the chamber as we need to stop the live stream. Yep, sorry councillors, I do have to put that to the vote as well. So if you can just, just go behind closed doors. Councillors, Councillor Perkoff. Thank you, that is unanimous, thanks councillors. So members of the public and um, those at home, uh, we will open back up and council must now consider a confidential item prior to closing the meeting. I'll just pause.